Keep going with the flow, but it feels we're moving slow while my head's still on the water. I've got my fin stance on. <laughs> no, you need to sit on your feet to do that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, so dude, look, that's gold. The, 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 the pro. <laughs> oh, I can't even. Oh. <laughs> that's dreadful. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. Okay, right. Hello. Welcome to another video. And this time, we always get loads of people asking us what we've done to our cars. So we thought we'd Actually explain. Video. Uh, instead of replying to every single comment, we'd just do a video about it. Which. Yeah. Good idea, really. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know whose car you want to start with. Start we have some lovely them. cars here. We've got my car, Dan's car, and as a special guest, we also have Bryn's car, because every single video this year he's been in, he just sort of follows us around. So, uh, we brought him here. As we, well, we thought we'd just keep the tradition now. So, Bryn is here with us, with his lovely car too. And we also have that. But don't, don't, don't look at that, don't look at that. <laughs> what did I do? Go, just go! What I... But we'll, we'll get on to that. <laughs> so this is my uh, 1992 JPEG. 91, 92. 91, 92. 91. Uh, import, so technically a UNOS Roadster, even though they're basically the same. Uh, I've had it probably about six years now. Uh, and I bought it for like a practice car when I used to have a stupid S body. Realised it was way better. So... Still got it today, and uh, it's been through about a million different iterations, but every time it's got better, 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 in my opinion, anyway. So, uh, body kit wise, uh, it's all made by Zach at ZB Fiberglass. So, it's a HKS Kanzai front bumper, RS Active skirts, um, Ducatro rear bumper that I have written toe on it because we were asked to point out our toe and eyes, so there is the toe eye, toe. Um, and it's a old Tipex spoiler of a S13, which Dan modified years ago to make it not point at the sky, because obviously it's not meant for an MX-5. Just a standard hard top, got some nice mirror visor things that some lovely Polish lady sent to us, that's really cool. Um, uh, wheels, just knock off wheels all round, because we seem to go through them like, I think they're ultralights on the front, JR's on the back, I have no idea. They're not even my wheels, they're the lovely camera ladies wheels. I just borrowed them because they got good tyres. So thanks for letting me rip up your tyres. <laughs> go to interior now, so it's got um, Mark II MX-5 dashboard. Eight bride bucket seats, tie brides as they call them. Uh, just some random harnesses. I really want to change these harnesses because I'm not a fan of this colour clash going on. I really like the blue against the red, but I, these were just cheap years ago and they've always worked. It's got Wilwood horizontal hydro because I don't like the vertical ones. I kind of like a similar handbrake to a standard one, so I've got a Wilwood hydro that's been sunk into the gearbox tunnel so I don't smash my elbow off it every five seconds. Uh, Nardi steering wheel with a Fancy quick release. Um, lovely reminder to anyone that this is not an MX-5, it's a Ferrari. It's got a manual, manual oil pressure gauge, so it's like the oil goes straight up to the gauge. I just thought that was cool. I think I've seen an old uh, run free video or something and just totally copied it. Um, and then obviously got the uh, TR Lane old school roll cage bolt in. I can't really find these anymore, so I was lucky to find it. Then we'll go on to the more interesting part um, of the engine. So, I mean, if you've watched our previous videos, you're probably sick of this by now. But, freshly redone 1.8 VBT engine out of a Mark II. Um, we have quite a lot of fancy work done by our lovely friend Bryn with the love car, who seems to be in our every video. So, it's a VBT engine with a 2 mil head skim, cat cams, um, skunk to big inlet manifold and throttle body. Uh, it's got a Weldman Motorsports tubular manifold. If you, these are quite hard to find for MX-5s, so if you want one, look up Weldman Motorsports. Uh, they're based in Poland and they'll make you any shape you want. 
uh, and they've got like dinographs to prove the differences and all that jazz. So that's pretty cool. So I've got one of them, uh, coil on plugs, just because, just because I really need them. But yeah, I've got a fancy intake, which is from Napa Motorsports in America, is that bit. And then that's made by a company called Dark Additive, and then the air filter sits there. Got some random blue headlights that I've no idea what they're off, but I think they look cool. Oh, and it's got a six speed gearbox. Suspension wise, VC coilovers, uh, eight kilogram on the front, six on the rear spring rates. Uh, it's got destroyer die, uppers, lowers, and super knuckles. So if you don't know what destroyer die is, they're like a company that makes drifty MX5 parts, um, and they're really good. They're just like a bolt-on solution. Um, if you want to go backwards and do all the cool stuff, just buy their stuff because it just works. You know. Uh, so and the rear is standard lower arms that have been shortened and welded, and some random adjustable upper arms. I've got destroy arms to go on it. I just haven't because can't be asked yet. <laughs> and it works. It is manual steering rack as well. That's a big one. Uh, loads of us run a manual steering rack because they just feel better. A lot of people try and depower the power steering ones, but I tried it myself and I couldn't get on with it. It was too snappy and horrible. It was really aggressive. So the manual rack is like a nice in between. You get loads of good feedback, but it's not too snappy because these are snappy cars. Um, so yeah, that's about it. It makes 180, 180 horsepower, which is definitely enough for one of these. Um, but I ran it for years with the standard VVT, which is 145, 147. Um, and that's plenty enough as well. I just needed to refresh the engine anyway, so we decided to go full hog and make it spicier. So, yeah, that's about it. And uh, yeah, it's done well today. That's why the cars are filthy because we've been doing drift demos. Pembrey. This is mine. It's 95, is it? 95, 96, whatever end reg is. Had it for five years. It was green, it's been grey, it's been blue red for two years um full body kit made by zach uh, zd fiberglass um, all fits well until you crash your car a few times <laughs> <laughs> wheels i like small wheels so i run 14s i normally have 15s on the back uh, so i can run accelerants but i haven't now because we're doing wet driving side skirts are the same as yours yeah, RS Active. RS Active, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I've put a little lip thingy on it, which not everyone likes, but I do. I like it. I think it's um, cool. I've had to put rear overs on because behind here is very dented, so that's fixed that. Um, Omex Type 3 yeah. wing. Um, what bumper is this? HKS. <laughs> Shotgun exhaust that I made, which only looked good from here. Behind is terrible. <laughs> More over fenders. Had to do this because of Finn, as I'll always remind him about. <laughs> Much like Connor, 330 mil Nardi, but I'm not a Ferrari, unfortunately. Um, I have a vertical hydro because I'm so used to it being next to the steering wheel uh, on a mount that I've made that bolts to the tunnel and then down to the seat bolt. So it's strong. I've got my little picture of my children, of Ben and Connor from Dory Fest, that I keep there. Um, Nice fake Chinese brides, which <laughs> very good. <laughs> and then suspension wise, I've kept it the same for years because it works. Got destroy or die cut knuckles, um, rack spacers, Meister coilovers with 6k and 5k springs. So it's nice suspension stuff. It's good. That's about it really. I haven't gone crazy with like super knuckles and stuff. Because yeah. you can't run the drop knuckles with little wheels. So, can't run those. Yeah. Um, manual steering rack. Engines? Engines. Engine. Engine. Engine! Get your engine out! Head work done by Brin. 
Here's the car. Oh, you've got one there. Um, big ITVs. These big noisy things. They're from an A86 on a Dan ST manifold that's cracked. It's been welded and cracked again. And I bodged it and it's been good. Um, right, what engine is it, Dan? <laughs> BVT. Yes. God's engine. God's oil burning engine. Yes. Um, one mil head skim on mine. I haven't gone as crazy as Connor. Stock cams, stock everything else. Ported and polished. It's about it, really. Nothing too crazy, but. Six speed as well. Six speed gearbox, yeah. yeah. 4 1, welded diff. That's what yeah. you need, isn't it? Yeah. yeah it just yeah. work. Yeah. It? That's the thing, isn't it? It's like it's all about seat time, you know, and when you just start making things complicated, you start reducing your seat time, which yeah, starts reducing it. your practice and your skill, yeah. essentially. And then NA with. Alloy rad, in like decent corners yeah. and everything. Yeah. It doesn't go over normal operating temp, yeah. so you just we hot lap all the time. I don't even look at the gauges. <laughs> My <laughs> gauge ignore. hasn't been working all day <laughs> just, today. I just ignore the gauges yeah. and it's fine. Do you want um, to tell us the story about this? No. You do. Ah, uh, that. Right. This. My B and Q gas hose from Kamath B and Q. That's been rubbing. That's fine. Um. I come to yours, didn't I? I yeah. drove this to Connor's, which is like four and a half, five hours. That's a big street drive, right? Everywhere yeah. street drive. If you've driven this all the way down here on a drifting weekend, and he's going to drive yeah. it home after. Hopefully. We're all fannies and trailer ours. Yeah. Um, what are we doing? We're doing something on your car. Some Bruce's car. My car. Might have been yeah, car the sun. Oh, it was a bank cool. holiday. Very busy traffic. I'm just cruising along. The one time I look at my temperature gauge and it's pinging over hot and I'm sat in traffic and then steam bursts out the engine. So I pulled over, that hose had just burst. All I had with me was electrical tape. So I wrapped it in loads of tape, it was still leaking, put all the water I had in it and had to go down awful Welsh little back lanes. It took me like, what, two hours? My dad, get, like, my dad phoned miles. me up. My dad phoned me up and he says, I think your friend's broken down. Does, does he want some help? I was like, uh, and he was like, but to be honest, if I do want to help him, it's going to take me an hour oh, to get him. traffic yeah. for miles in each direction. And I was like, I'll be all right. I managed to get into a little town, found a Tesco, bought loads of water, got my way over to B&Q. And I was wandering around there for half an hour, looking for something to bodge it with, and then saw... Nice bit of gas hose, which come with clips, and I had to buy a screwdriver to put them on. <laughs> and I was fuming, and I fixed it, and then... It's still the same to this day. it's the same, because it just works. <laughs> so I've just got a lovely bit of orange hose on there. Yeah. It tells a story, but, though, doesn't exactly. it? That's the best part. Yeah. It tells a story. I mean, these cars have been with us for, like, five or six years, years now. Yeah. And like you, this was meant to be my little practice car while I was building my S13, and then... Just yeah, it. it's yeah. just really fun. They so, are. I mean, I've got a Corolla, an 86, and like it just this is like five times a better car. Mm. It drives better, it's cheaper, you can do way more with them, like yeah. without spending a fucking million pounds. And uh, insert clip here, uh, yeah, and, <laughs> and they don't try and kill you when you're driving them. <laughs> So mine's yeah. currently sat in the garage at this point in the other way, the front end. So, but yeah, MX-5 is the best car. So, and that leads us on to, look at him pacing up and down <laughs> in the back there. Oh. He's so nervous. I'm trying to keep Mate, warm. You should, you should be nice and comfortable now because you've been on our videos so many times. <laughs> so, so secret non-official yeah. team. So Bryn is not officially part of Gripped Up, but he just also happens to have a red car. And he's like a very good gap. That's what we've been to this weekend, they're gap fillers. But yeah. Bryn is our gap filler. So he just, he just sort so of, rude. Just, it's not rude. It's not rude. It's, even he says it's perfect because he gets the fun of driving with a team and none of the responsibilities. Yeah, so although I take them on anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can always say, oh, I don't want to do it. And we'd be like, oh, well, he's it, but don't do it, don't. So yeah. Come and show us around your lovely car because you've had this longer than we've had ours. Uh, yes. Longer than I've been alive. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my 1990 G-Reg uh, 1.6. And exterior wise, unlike the other guys, I rigidly stick to the same thing. So this deuce kit has been on this car for, I don't know, like seven years, eight years. I've had the car itself for 10 years now. 
and uh, a lot like the other guys, I bought it as a cheap alternative until I could get an S body sorted and sort of realized that it's just better, I enjoy it more, it's cheaper, the same thing. But this has become my little S body. So I run the deuce kit because it looks like drifting looked to me when I got into it. You know, low cars, hovercraft kits, it's kind of how it should be. And we've got the... <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's least favourite feature, the OG Rad Wrap. This again is probably eight years old now, which is why it looks so haggard. But I refuse to get rid of it, despite the peer pressure. I, I really enjoy it. Um, you'll have to pardon the little oopsies from, from that we've had here. There's, there's, this is sad and missing. There's normally a bumper there. Um, yeah, I mean, wheels-wise, again, really particular. I run uh, Rotor RKRs, they're 15 by 8 ET10. There's a 5mm spacer on the front, and I think that's the perfect amount of fitment. It just rubs my arches, but without being too much of a problem. Um, and, uh, well, these are just some... some I can't say it, can I? <laughs> these are some Hotter Stars. Uh, Hotter Star Magics. And I absolutely love these. I am a sucker for long champs. And I wish they made them in a 4x100 of decent spec. And they don't. So when these came out, so many people messaged me and said, Have you seen what Hotter Star make? And I was like, Yes! <laughs> so there we go. There's a set of those. Um, <laughs> coming around to the back, I mean, this is going to be a bit of a theme. Um, a lot of the parts that I've got on this car, you you actually can't buy them anymore because I'm so old. Uh, <laughs> this is from before Fiberworks. I can't even remember what they're called. It's a hard top spoiler uh, that you can't buy. This is the old FBM garage bash bar. We love this bit of <laughs> <laughs> ironworks. Um, built all the exhaust myself because uh, I, I've always liked those kind of the Jap can style N1 exhaust. You can't really buy them for an MX-5 unless you get a Malian, which didn't exist when I had this. And also uh, terrible. <laughs> terrible. I found a lovely exhaust, which as it turns out, well, I, I had to import it from the States. It was a, an American Day Special. Uh, as it turns out, it's a replica of an HKS exhaust. And when I went turbo, it was shagged. It was completely ruined. So I built all this, um, which, now looks dirty and horrible. Um, rare loop again. I'm pretty sure this is either an actual OEM R package spoiler or a Wings West, which is again. That's what your bumper is. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Wings West, okay. But uh, yeah, I, I got this off somebody even before Facebook Marketplace was a thing who just said, I've bought an MX-5 and it's got some weird stuff in the boot. I don't know what it is. Do you want it for 20 quid? Turns out this spoiler and a, a Mazda Speed spark plug cover. Nice. <laughs> um, right, so once again, the Nardi 330, God's wheel, uh, but short man mode. I've got an NRG short hub with a short quick release. I had to remove the horn because I could not get a, fi a functional horn. So there's a button on the dash over there somewhere. Um, similarly, short man hydro setup. That is the only place that I can put a hydro and actually get myself in the car because I sit really high up and really far forward with my stumpy little legs. Um, and it's got this, <laughs> got this lovely custom handle, which is a bit of scrap metal from work that looked really pretty. So I have that. Um, Five speed, unlike the other guys, um, I do have a six speed, but the five speed has always worked out kind of all right for me. I wish I had had a six speed when this used to be NA, um, but we'll get onto that with the engine, I suppose. Uh, bucket seat, no idea. Absolutely not a clue. Um, and just a, a set of OMP harnesses. Uh, and then we've got the little custom gauge pod. Catted that up myself, never finished it. That's a common theme with this car also. <laughs> Um, and the old wink mirror that anybody taller than me cannot see past when they're in the passenger seat, which is a good fun, fun feature. Um, and GC Fab's roll bar, absolutely love these things. Absolutely love them. Suspension wise, it's also on Meisters like Dan's and pretty much the same Meisters, but I ended up putting the higher rates that the track ones would have had. So it's uh, 10 kilogram on the front, 
and then I moved the sixers to the rear. Um, so again, it's nice and soft and bouncy. Engine. 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 Bonnet vent as well, you didn't talk about that. Oh yeah, it's a Bonnet Nismo vent. style that we spent ages smoothing this in because I just, I, I don't like when they're just plonked on the top, but you can't really buy this bonnet quite right. I think Carbon Miata do one, but the vent is like really far back or something. I don't like the ones with big square edges. So again, really particular. It had to be this one. It had to sit there to line up with the car. And uh, Dan did a lovely job of painting it for me. Yeah, and you've off, you? I have looked off. <laughs> and uh, the Jazz Performance lights, again, I love these things so much. For me, they just, they complete that little S-body look. And you can see lights. over these. And I, can, <laughs> I genuinely, yes, I could not see over the other lights. <laughs> Oh, there's a lot of coolant in there. There's not meant to be that much coolant in there. We'll have a look at that later. Good. Uh, <laughs> so, so this used to be NA for a very, very long time. It's a 1.6 and I kept it that way. Um, put a set of Piper cams on it, put ITVs on it, put an equal length manifold on it. And it was great. Solo driving, I absolutely loved it. You had to kick its head in and work really, really hard. But the guys that I was driving with were all driving 350Zs, comp cars, and things like that. So I decided I needed more power. It's the wrong answer. You don't need more power. But to drive with them, I did. So I built another engine. And line in the sand, I already had a 1.6. My friend had a low mileage 1.6 spare. So I stuck with the 1.6. Um, it's had a lot of head work, port and polishing, things like that. It's got forged rods, which I don't really need for the power that I ended up running. Um, because there's this Kraken kit and a T25 on it. And the whole idea was to get 250 horsepower. That seems to sort of be the holy grail turbo MX5 number. I drove it on wastegate pressure and realised they really don't need that. This is probably 200, maybe 210 wheel, and it is fantastic. For me, it's absolutely perfect. Um, yeah, over the top radiator, uh, radiator, intercooler hoses. Uh, because I'm getting old now and I'm sick of being on the floor. So the one thing I didn't want was to have a boost problem and have to get on the ground to drift a bit. So everything's available from the and top. I've never had a boost problem. And I've <laughs> never, <laughs> not once. But it's the things that you worry about that don't come back to bite. Um, other than that, there's not a lot. There's, there's lots of little things with the engine, little particular things. Like it's the later NB 1.6 manifold because you get a straight shot throttle body, you have uh, the integrated idle speed control so you don't have to run a separate hose that you have to blank off and things like that. Just, it's just nicer and it comes with a variable throttle sensor as standard. Um, it's now running 1.8 crank pulley so that I can have the smaller alternator pulley on the alternator to get more speed or more amps at idle. Little things like this that as I've gone on I've found just tiny annoying things that I then hyper focus on and spent weeks fixing a problem that everyone else just ignores. <laughs> yeah, lots of Many pointing clicks. at things. Um, but I mean other than that there's not an awful lot to say about it. I'm still running the same Piper cams, just retimed for turbo and it loves it. It's yeah, it's, it's really it's, good. It's good. It's not quite as carefree as these boys' cars. I do have to watch the temps and things but um, yeah overall it's pretty good. But it matches up with our cars really well. Yeah, yeah, power-wise, like, we, they drive together well, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, the fact that you've, like, built it so well, you don't have all the bullshit that comes with the two mm -hmm. MX-5s, where it spends half a day in the pits because something's gone wrong, and mm. you just have as much seat time as we do. It's yeah. great. The thing Bryn hasn't mentioned is he spent so long building the engine, all of his old friends used to drive with, all moved on. And then he found us boys that all had NA cars yeah. again. <laughs> He's been ruined the day ever yeah. since. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. you know, one day it will blow up and I will go 1.8 VVT, God's motor. Yes. And then that leads us on to our, uh, you know, it's not, not last but, last but not least. It last it and it is least. least. <laughs> so, yeah. So, Finn. Hello. Tell us what the fuck is that? Right, so this is my 1991 um unos roadster so it's a uh, h reg um i bought it like three months ago it's a bit of a shed to be honest uh it was a 1.6 is now 1.8 but 
I'll start with the outside. So I've currently got Antimo front bumper made by ZV Fiberglass. You know, best fiberglass guy in the in the industry, really. Yeah. Um, the sides we've got actually, we believe, genuine GV skirts. They're kind they're of, a bit hanging, though, yeah, aren't they? Very hanging. Those of you that have been following for a while know that I had a, a Mark II MX5, and that unfortunately perished a while ago. Of rust. Of rust. <laughs> yeah. I was looking for a new car. Connor. Um, had, has had this at his, or had had this at his unit. Yeah, this for, was just chilling at my unit because yeah. somebody had bought it. My yeah. friend Dylan had bought it and then just not done anything with it. So I said, why don't you just buy this Mark One? It's not, it's not terrible. It's cheap. Yeah. I know it's not a Mark Two, but you yeah, know, I really It's a, a decent Mark car, II. and then you know, and he since, can build since, it up. since I've bought it, loads of caged Mark Two shells have come up for sale. And yeah. I was like, but um, I'm happy with it. Back to the car. You know, genuine, maybe GV skirts. At the rear, we've got ZB5 glass racing beat bumper. Don't mind all the holes. Um, I've missed that. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I just tried to make it stick on really well with tech screws um, and some sealant. You're gonna have and, fun filler and all that. Yeah, you? I know. Well, no, it'll be fine. Just <laughs> wash. Um, at the back, genuine Bomex Type One imported from Japan. Nice. Um, yeah, it's a good spoiler. Um, happy with that. And then. Fiber works, hard top spoiler, same as Dan's, it's kind of falling off at the minute, but that's fine. Um, then wheels, uh, front we've got Autostar Classic, those are my main wheels, I've got nine of them. At the rear, these are Rota something or other, um, 9J wheels, so I run 15 by 8 for the most part, uh, but these are 15 by 9. Um, they look cool, I like the bronze, but um, I'll be probably switching these out to Autostar Classics once I finish the car. Yeah, so basically, you are gonna. It, it's yeah, it's a massive. Be, it's supposed to be red. You it's just, a massive yeah. work in progress. Basically, what happened was Finn was like, "Yeah, I need to build this car. I need to build this car." And then obviously, we've come down here to do drift demos, and he's like, "Oh, I'll just come down to watch." He's like, "I might try and build my car in two weeks." Yeah. So two weeks, you've managed to get it to this stage, which it's running, driving, working on the road. Um, all the Basically kits on. Fully legal as yeah, well. the kits all on. Obviously, the massive elephant in the room. It needs painting. Yeah. But you know and that'll be the final stage, well, and we're filming a separate video about that. So the paint is going to be a bit of a nightmare because it's been sanded down with a brick, um, so it's a bit rough. But you know, some filler primer in a couple of weeks should be should be ready to go. Right. So on oh, the side, this way. it's almost identical to my Mark II. Well, kind of. So we stand a Mark One dash. You know, I kind of like how they look, so kept that there. Uh, we've got Black Flag Labs um, Unos Rep uh, floor mats, which the only reason I mention those is because I spilled the Domino's garlic and herb dip on it. <laughs> so you can see there, I tried to wipe it up with a wet wipe, I'm just going to put them in the, wa in the wash. Um, then we have some lovely Bride Zeta something or other reps um, off eBay. Um, they were really dirty, I washed them, put the covers back on, haven't done a great job with it. Then we have this lovely pineapple something, I don't know the name of it, it's just it just says pineapple on it. It's a, it is a JDM steering wheel, proper Jap import steering wheel. Um, it matches the seats. I like it. The boys hate it. I don't care. It's fucking awful. I love it. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna polish it. Pro I'm gonna repair it and polish it properly. It's gonna be nice, bright red. And then, cube, uh, cube speed uh, shift knob. I just thought I'd mention that because I just bought it. Uh, at the back here, we've got an Invicta Motorsport roll bar. Came on the car. It's yellow. Same color as my old one, but. I'd like to get a full cage and paint that properly. Okay, so suspension-wise, I know you can't see it now, but it's a uh, full front-end destroy kit, so lower arms, upper arms, super knuckles. Uh, feels really nice. Uh, you know, all new ball joints, tie rods, whatever. Special shocks and springs, uh, H HSD monopros, all on the front, semi in the rear, so quite still like a um, Substitute for lack of anti-roll, but kind of did really work, but uh, it's whatever. Um, at the rear, it's completely stock at the minute. So, um, Sam Charles, Sam C, he's going to be fabbing me up some uh, short and lowers, short and lower arms, so I'll have no camera at the back. That's all I'm planning to do, really, then polish my shoe. Oh, steering, steering, one of the, yeah, so that's a bit of a nightmare. Uh, but steering wise, um, one of the main reasons I want to mark on is some poor uh, manual rack. So, it was a D powered rack, it sucked. Um, so, I spent ages looking for a manual rack, it was a whole fiasco. I managed to get one, shout out to Javis. Um, and yeah, it's a bit tight at the minute, I need to loosen it, um, but it'll be a work eventually. Yeah, don't look at that. What just, is that noise? Like that. Oh my god. You know this, you own this car. Okay. I didn't, I didn't know it did that. Right, so how, did, how else did you put like a log under it or something? Yeah. Okay, so here we have 
It's a 1.8, but it was a 1.6. Um, it's running 1.6 ECU, loom, all of that. Um, you know, 1.6 intake manifold, 1.6 FPR, uh, but it's got 1.8 injectors, so it runs super rich, because the old 1.6s already ran rich. Um, so imagine that with 1.8 uh, injectors, is ridiculous. Like, start it up on the driveway, it just shoots black from um, unburnt fuel everywhere. I started up in front of my house, big mistake, whole front of the house covered in soot. Um, <laughs> You know, but other than that, it's... Can know, we just mention this stock. bit as well? Yeah. What bit? This. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, so this, this is a special feature. Yeah, so, so Brad, Brit, Brit made that. It's a Rad X Roadster Repair. Yeah. Um, throttle body spacer. So this is to adapt the um, the 1.6. No, 1.8. One, in that. Sorry, 1.8. Is this 1.8 in that? Yeah, so 1.8 in that. Oh, okay. Adapted with to a 1.6 sort of body. Yeah, yeah, so this yeah, all plugs in with the factory plugs and works off a standard ECU. Yeah. I forgot about that. Okay, yeah. yeah so that's that's a big feature. Um, shout is this out to a big Rad. feature as well? What this cap sitting down here that should oh, be on there. Oh, I was looking for that. <laughs> okay. Another thing I like to mention is um, when I first. So the whole thing about this car is I tried to build it in two weeks. So luckily I had some help from you know Sam Patson and uh, Tom Sinclair. Shout out to them. They really helped me put the um, destroy stuff on. You know all the front suspension. But when I first saw you, know, I did all the diff and then got on the there was so much button up, it was ridiculous. You know, I had to get all the lights working because they were all like Not messed weird. up. Yeah, they were just, <laughs> yeah, just all messed up. That the indicator on this because it's got halos, which I hate. Uh, there, that's not working. But I, I drove it for the first time. Um, it was all right. It was um, the drive shaft was hitting on the exhaust, so it's making a terrible noise. That's self clearance now. Um, my <laughs> skirts are still hitting the um, it's still hitting the wheels when I turn, but it's not quite as bad. Um, and it overheated really badly because I left it running for a while. So what my solution is really bad, but I just had to, because I literally left like an hour after I, I, um, I fixed this. I just had a shower, packed my bags and then left. But um, what I've done is I've run a wire to the alternator uh, wire that goes to the fuse box here, all the way down here. There's a fuse here and uh, that goes into the goes into the fans here and then grounds to some random headlight wire here that's way too thin but it's fine um, and that operates the fan um, and then I'll fix it it's got some switches wired up in there I assume that's what all of this is for here but um, you know just a bunch of random stuff that I'll so basically your plan is to get this painted and yeah. sorted drive it this year on this engine is it yeah, yeah, I, well, to be, yeah, I kind of, depending on how this engine ends up being, I might just stick with it for quite yeah, a while. And then, yeah. and then come to the dark side, to the, the BBT side, yeah. God's Engine Squad. Supercharged, yeah. <laughs> no! <laughs> no! <laughs> One thing also mentioned, I will. <laughs> I was like, supercharged, I was like, <laughs> six speed gearbox like Dan and Connor, the best gearbox, but I'm also running a 4.3 differential, so slightly shorter ratios. Um, so I'm, it's got potential to be a good drift car. It feels like it's a bit gutless, so I think swapping 1.6 injectors into it will make it yeah, that's, lean that's out where, a bit. That's why it's just running stupidly. Rich. And then it may it may get like it may blow up or it may be really fast. It's one of the two. It's an um, unknown engine. I bought the car with that engine plonked in with a 1.6 blow up, and then yeah. they realised nothing actually works on it. So yeah. I got it running. But there was not there was a bit of conflict and info about the injectors, so I left the 1.8 injectors in it. But now oh, yeah. we know that we need the 1.6 one. So yeah, so it's it's, it's running, driving, sorted. Yeah. It's just a it's a project, isn't it? Yeah. You know? XCD clutch. That's the best one. Me and Connor both run that. Um, yeah. It looks like shit. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah, looks it, like no, shit. It, it, but but, no, it looks uh, but cool. it's a project. Yeah, but the arrow is cool. Oh, exhaust as well. It's got the best back box on it ever. Isle Motorsport. Like, how old is that back box? Like, Ten years old? I don't know. Old. It's old. It's an old back box, but it sounds so good. Literally didn't barely tested it. Drove it all the way from uh, just east of Cambridge, um, all the way here. No issues. Uh, 300 miles, near enough, um, and no issues. Drove perfectly. Um, so really happy with it. It's, a, it's actually nice to drive in my Mark II because uh, that better. rattled about like even like 30 mile an hour. It's a better car. Well, it's just I didn't take care of that Mark II really, to be honest. Um, yeah. But you know, this has got all new nice bits on it and it, dry, it just drives nice. You just need to make it look good now. Yeah, so that's going to take a long time. But at least now, I, if I want to, I can go to a, I can just go to a drift event or I can daily. I'm going to be dailying this thing for the next.
next however long. Um, yes. I really, really, really like the bottom. Yeah so, there. yeah, so basically, this is the worst part of the car, and I actually have to use a key. So, you stick the key in there, give that a bit of leverage, and then do a bit of pulling down, and then that goes like that. This one sometimes works like that, but you sometimes have to do the same thing. Uh, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for watching. Um, if you like us that much for some reason, you should really think about getting yourself some cool. Yes. Cool. Uh, Gripped up dot shop. Merchandise. We've got lots of different things. Yeah. Uh, we've got this as well. Yeah. And I think I'm wearing the shirt underneath. That's my favourite one. The yeah, it's my favourite. I've one. got the Panbrae yeah. shirt on. Yeah. There we go. This is just the the t-shirt version of that. Yeah. But. No, it's it's all good quality. It's cheap as and well. It's got the hat on. Yeah, oh, we don't the sell the hat actually. We've, well, we've taken the hat off. Well, no, we haven't taken the hat. <laughs> no, no, no. We've well, had some problems with the hats. The but hats for the most part, better. it's cheap, good clothing, and we like make basically not, nothing. Yeah, on them we don't make because, any money out of it. Because we just want to get them out. It's just sick to like. I'm pretty sure there's one one of our t-shirts we're in like one pound fifty out of or something. Yeah. Isn't it? But, but it, yeah, it's it's good though because. Even we just want to go to events and see someone wearing the merch, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's sick. It's so, so sick. And yeah. it's really cool that people enjoy this. So yeah. yeah, thanks for watching and we will see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. <laughs>